Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So today, I would like to, as this is the final presentation of the day, and actually uh, the last presentation of the Congress, so I will try to keep it as short as possible for you. So today I would like to talk about the effect of processing on in vitro bioaccessibility of phenolics, flavonoids, or the antioxidant capacity of some vegetables that we have selected, and we have uh, or we try to investigate <coughs> what happens if they are consumed together with or without <coughs> yogurt. So before starting to make it clear why we have selected this topic, I would like to give some basic information. So we all know that the best sources of antioxidants are fruits and vegetables. And last year's they started to become very popular because of their high levels of uh, antioxidants or other bioactives. So uh, as a result of these or by the effect of these antioxidants, they provide some protective uh, effects, uh, especially on cardiovascular diseases or cancers. So this was the reason why they became popular and we were recommended to consume uh, high levels of fruits and vegetables daily. So we all know that we can consume fruits and vegetables in forms of fresh, as fresh, or they are being processed into different products. And the reason of processing is, as you all know, we try to extend their shelf lives. We try to make them more available throughout the whole year instead of consuming them uh, for a short period of time. And of course, it might be a demand from the customers, from the consumers, uh, so because they are being converted into new products, which could be attractive for the consumers. And by this way, uh, sometimes their nutritional value or their quality, their sensory properties might also be changed. So these are the reasons why we process food materials. And of course, while processing food materials, we all expect to have some changes in their quality or in their nutritional value. This is something what we expect. But of course, as a result of some factors, the effect of processing might change. For example, the nature and the conditions uh, of the, or the uh, processes that have been applied. So for example, blanching or microwave heating of the same vegetable, of course, will result in a different way. The changes on the quality or in the nutritional value will be, of course, different. The variety and the origin of the food material used is also an important factor. So at this point, I would like to give a specific uh, example for this. In a study performed in uh, Italy, they worked on tomato antioxidants, and uh, they have collected some samples, some tomato samples from Italy, but also from Spain as well. And they have applied completely the same procedures, the same treatments. But according to the results, they observed an increase in the antioxidant capacity in one of the tomato varieties, while the other one showed a decrease. So this is a very specific, very critical example showing the importance of the variety of the food material that we are working with. And thirdly, another factor is the biochemical properties of the antioxidants. So we all would expect differences, how a vitamin might be affected from a thermal treatment and how a phenolic acid would be affected. So as you see, the nature, the biochemical properties also makes a difference. So the dietary antioxidants, we said they are important because they provide protection against oxidative stress, because uh, they somehow stabilize these reactive oxygen species and free radicals, and as a result, they protect or they provide protection against cellular lipids, proteins, and DNA, and this is the mechanism that is being explained by the researchers how these antioxidants provide some positive health effects. And of course, we can talk about many different types of antioxidants, but the basic, the main ones are carotenoids, flavonoids, and vitamins. And they have, of course, they are being found in different food sources. For example, when we are talking about carotenoids or lycopene, tomato is probably the first example that we would remember. And of course, they all provide to decrease the risks of several diseases like cancer or cardiovascular diseases, which are quite critical for well-being. And we said that by the effect of processing, of course, there are some changes that might appear. So what are sort of processes can we apply? 
These could be either thermal treatments or non-thermal treatments like cutting, homogenization, or these could be blanching, evaporation as an example for thermal treatments. And of course, they affect the nutritional status of the food material we are processing. But previously, it was believed that food processing always decreased the nutritional value of the food product. But last year's researchers started to report that it's not always the case. So sometimes, by the effect of food processing, we may enhance, we may improve the nutritional quality of that food material. For example, if we consume tomato juice instead of consuming raw tomatoes in fresh form, so we will be able to obtain more bioavailable lycopene. So th these were the findings that were reported. So as a result, by the effect of processing, we can say that it is sometimes, it provides some beneficial effects as well. So uh, when we come to the point bioavailability, first I would like to describe what it is. Bioavailability is the proportion of a nutrient that is digested, absorbed, and metabolized through normal pathways. This is the description definition of bioavailability. And when we are talking about fruits and vegetables, yes, they contain high levels of antioxidants, but this is not only the point. So even though they may contain high levels of antioxidants, if they are not bioavailable, if they are not bioaccessible, it doesn't mean anything. So it means that if we are trying to get use of their physiological effects, they should be bioavailable. And somehow we need to find some ways to improve the bioavailability of those products. So as I have given in my previous slide as an example, for example, in the case of tomatoes, if I process tomatoes, I will be able to obtain more bioavailable lycopene, so which is very critical, which is probably due to some changes in the chemical forms of these compounds. But even though the antioxidant capacity or the content of fruits or vegetables or many different food uh, types or varieties have been studied widely, there's still lack of information on the bioavailability of what or what happens on the bioavailability of these antioxidants. So this was the reason why we have selected this topic to work on. So, and when we come to our study, we worked with vegetables and yogurt, as I have mentioned on the title page. Uh, the reason for that was that we know that the bioavailability or the bioaccessibility of antioxidants do not only get affected by processing, but also the food matrix have a very critical influence. For example, it's known that dietary fiber has a negative effect or lipids have a positive effect on the bioaccessibility of some antioxidants. So that's why besides working on what happens during processing, we want to also investigate what happens in a complex matrix. So the reason why we have selected yogurt is because it's being consumed traditionally or commonly in Turkey, so there are some vegetables which we commonly consume together with yogurt. So regarding all these aspects, the aim of the study was to determine the effects of food processing on total phenolics or the antioxidant capacity of the food materials, and also to investigate what happens when we consume these yogurts and vegetables together. So this was the idea of the study. We worked with four different vegetables, basically celery, red beetroot, carrot, and red capia peppers, because these are the ones which we consume together with yogurt the most. So that was the reason why we have selected those. And we have uh, we used raw materials. We have selected samples or take samples from the raw <coughs> vegetables, and we have sliced them. We boiled them, we roasted them, because these were the typical uh, home cons consumption methods, let me say. And also, we know that thermal treatments especially may affect the nutritional value of those vegetables. And also, slicing sometimes may cause a wounding effect, which results with a higher antioxidant content. So these were the reasons why we applied these processes, and we uh, have applied several methods on the samples with or without yogurt. So the first method we have applied was the in vitro gastrointestinal digestion method in which we mimic the uh, real conditions in the body. So for example, we apply acids here in order to mimic the stomach conditions. And afterwards we incubated for two hours. 
Afterwards, we take samples named as PG. This is the post-gastric phase. Then we apply pancreatin and bile salt mixture, and we put them in a dialysis bag in order to see or in order to mimic the intestine, what happens or how much of them is being absorbed. So this was the procedure that we have applied, and PG in and out samples were collected from this procedure. Then, besides these PG in and out fractions that we have collected, we also apply the chemical extraction and we applied several spectrophotometric methods and also HBLC analysis all together to these samples. So when we have a look at the results, so we observe that if we compare the beginning or the starting conditions, we can clearly see that red copia pepper was found to have the highest total phenolic and total flavonoid content in comparison to the others. And similarly, the total antioxidant capacity results showed the same. But here at this point, I would like to mention something that when you compare different methods, we have applied four different methods, you can observe some differences in these methods. So probably the people who are working on the analysis of antioxidants will understand me very well. So because it's a general, it's a typical problem while working with antioxidants because different methods have different advantages and disadvantages, which gives different results. So this was the reason why we always prefer to use different methods to be able to understand what's really going on. So if I have a look at the processing effect, what happens when I process my vegetables? So if I consume them raw, sliced, boiled, or roasted, so what is critical here, as you all observe, the, to the an antioxidant capacity that we observed by two methods showed an increase, a significant increase, when we compare them with the raw material. So the roasted samples here contains higher levels of antioxidants in comparison to the raw material. So this was the situation for carrots, but as you see, this is the same for the celery as you see here, or also for the red beetroot as well. So as you see, roasting might have a positive effect on the nutritional value of the fruits that we are working with. So the reason why this happens, also you would see the same in the total antioxidant capacities as well. Also for the red copia pepper, actually you would observe the same results for roasted and for the sliced samples. So the reason for that is probably Normally, we know that the phenolic compounds present in a complex form together with carbohydrates or together with proteins. And by the application of heat, by an application of thermal treatment, they are being disturbed, leading to a more available or more extractable phenolics. So probably, or sometimes some researchers explain it in a different way, indicating that there are some structural changes in these phenolic compounds and as a result, they become more available, more bioavailable. So also for the sliced one, as I have described previously, it could be as a reason or as a result of wounding effect, which increases the total antioxidant capacity of these compounds. So we obtain similar results also for the antioxidants. And we wanted to investigate if individually, if there is a change on the phenolics or not, because the previous ones, were from spectrophotometric analysis in which we measured the total values, but also for the HBLC, I just put this one as an example for you to see. And when we compare raw and roasted samples, you can see that the levels of quercetin or the luteolin derivatives increases significantly. So this was an uh, important finding for us as we had the opportunity to prove that there is really a change. Also for the in vitro gastrointestinal digestion analysis, again I have selected one graph as an example. As you see in the case of carrots and red peppers, we obtain an increase in the recovery values when you compare them with the raw material, meaning that not only the antioxidant capacity of the sample itself, but the bioavailability of those antioxidants are also improved. So, but again, I have to mention that it's not always the case, for example, for celery or red beetroot, but it's the case for some specific vegetables showing the importance of the variety or the origin of that fruit or vegetables. 
So when I come to the effect of yogurt addition, I first would like to explain how we obtain these graphs. These are the recovery uh, per expected values. So we have calculated the expected values as this. So for example, in the case of total phenolics, what I would expect is normally we have blended these samples with yogurt half to half, meaning that the total phenolic content of the vegetable divided by two, so half of it, plus the antioxidant capacity or the total phenolic content of the yogurt divided by two are being summed up. So this is what we expect, but what we have observed while analyzing them was different, actually was much better in comparison what we have expected. So as you see here, in most of the analysis, besides some of them, we obtain an increase. It means that we have better recoveries. We can get use of some antioxidants much better when we consume them together with yogurt, which is really an important and significant finding. Similar to that, we have obtained more or less the same results for celery, except for very small uh, analysis. I think this is the total flavonoid content, but as I have mentioned previously, there could be some shifts or changes between different methods. Also for the red beetroot, as you see, for all the analysis, we obtain higher re recovery values, and also for red capia pepper, the results indicated that we enhance or we improve the bioavailability or the bioaccessibility of these antioxidants. So as a conclusion, the, I should say that the effect of processing varies significantly, as we have observed in the example of carrots or red pepper, for example. It makes a big difference because the variety, the origin, the source of this fruit and or vegetable is important. Also, roasting especially might have an important impact on the antioxidant status of these vegetables. And as you see, yogurt addition may enhance the antioxidant content or the bioavailability of these antioxidants. So thank you very much for your attention. Thanks very much for your interesting lecture. So again, questions in the back. Thank you very much for your presentation. You. Uh, question, did you consider uh, like different cooking temperatures, uh, for instance in roasting, roasting at lower temperature to compare, yeah. or, or steaming, uh, or is that too similar to boiling, or did you consider uh, to combine with yogurt some vegetables that you don't traditionally consume with yogurt in Turkey? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much for your question. Actually, we have performed uh, or we tried to investigate these differences in a different study, but not within this study. And we realized that, of course, the temperature that you apply makes a big difference. So it means that sometimes you observe, for example, you apply heat or you apply or that you increase the temperature to a certain point and you observe an increase in the antioxidant capacity after a certain point. So this is what we have observed from our different results. But within this study, we wanted to take the original recipes, so how they are being cooked at home. So that's why we didn't change the temperatures or we didn't work on different parameters or factors. But in our, or according to our previous experiences, it was the case that the time, the temperature, of course, or different methods of cooking, they make a big difference for sure. So if you wish, I mean, I can share this information with you. Yeah. Okay, um, I have two questions. Yeah. One uh, easy question for you, yeah. and then a more, qu more difficult one, which I will probably ask everybody here because uh, it's difficult to answer. But the first one is simple. When you were roasting your vegetables, yeah. um, and you looked at the concentration before and after, did you compensate for how much water had evaporated during the roasting? Yeah, a very good question. So normally, uh, this is again what we always compare on a dry weight basis and a fresh weight basis. But the thing, especially for the uh, bioaccessibility or the bioavailability experiments, we do not convert them into dry weight basis. The reason for that is normally either you consume 100 grams of carrots or 100 grams of cook or roasted carrots. So we are trying to take the amounts that are being consumed. So this was the basis. But besides mm -hmm. that, 
we always compare what is happening to the moisture content as well. So yeah. very but, good. But I mean, just mm -hmm. for clarification, so maybe you needed 150 grams of raw carrot to make 100 grams of roasted carrot, for example. It could be, but uh, yeah. normally, as far as I remember, because we measured the moisture contents, uh, it was not the case. I mean, it doesn't double, but it was just, I mean, yeah. uh, the reduction of the moisture content, because the time is not that long, mm. you do not remove too much moisture, I should yeah. say. Okay, yeah. thank you. That was a simple question. Yeah, sure. The difficult question <laughs> is, does anybody here, have anybody seen any paper ever showing that a vegetable with a high antioxidant capacity is better for health than another vegetable with a low antioxidant capacity. Because I have not seen that paper. Uh, and everybody assumes that it exists. Um, <laughs> but I would like to see the data because I'm worried about spending a lot of money on something which may be not correct. And this is not a criticism yeah. of you. It's a, across yeah, yeah, yeah. everybody. We all know that eating vegetables is good. We know there's lots of antioxidants in vegetables, so they're highly correlated, but correlation is not cause and effect. And, and the point being, uh, and I mean, I'm, I'm talking about it in yeah, your country, but yeah. it's a more general point. If we think that we know that it is the antioxidants that are doing it, and so we try to increase the antioxidants, we might reduce the true effect if we are wrong. Maybe we're right, maybe we're wrong, but I don't understand so many scientists have made this experiment and they have all failed to come up with clear data to publish and that worries me because they've been trying for 20 years and they still have not been able to prove it. Yeah, I think uh, this is not the case, you know. There are some also publications indicating the negative effects of consuming too much of those antioxidants. So oh, it's, yeah, it's a it big even debate. Worse. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it, it's a big debate now. So, you are right. <laughs> you mentioned in presentation that uh, antioxidant compound is bound to protein yeah. or carbohydrate. And also you mentioned that by adding yogurt to, to the vegetables, enhance the, the bioavailability of the antioxidant. Yeah. Do you think that could be the enzymatic activity or microbial in the yogurt could has be. impact on releasing the antioxidant? It, it definitely could be, because we have another study in which we are working on the effect of fermentation. So we are trying to investigate the differences between an unfermented sample, for example, milk with a strawberry extract, and when you ferment it, uh, when it becomes or turns into yogurt, what happens? It's uh, definitely true that it could be as a result of some microbial activity, because the lactic acid bacteria it was shown that it improves the antioxidant status of those food materials. So, a uh, very important point. Yeah. Further questions? <laughs> uh, I have a very quick question. Uh, as you mentioned in the uh, presentation, when uh, you use a different uh, processing method, yeah. Especially uh, using the, the roasting, yeah. the um, fluoric compound increased, right? Increased. The, boil, uh, the roasting, you mean, it increased the antioxidant capacity mm -hmm. of the vegetables. Yes, you are right. This is Ye what I said. Yes. Uh, in terms of um, fluoric compound and antioxidant uh, activity as well, increased. So do you have any uh, explanation for uh, this so, uh, result? Excuse me, I couldn't get the question. So you mean... If I have observed an increase in the antioxidant com content no. while roasting, or what is the point? Use, I don't yeah, it. using the different uh, processing methods, okay. right? Okay. Yeah. So you you saw um, the fenolic compound yeah. in the raw and is the roasting um, lower values. Yeah, is yeah. Uh, yeah is different. So any uh, explanation? Because explanation. I, yes, because actually uh, when you're roasting at a very high temperature, 200 degrees for yeah, seven minutes. minutes, I don't think it's uh, uh, it it can, the case. Yeah, yeah. Really it's a decrease. No, no. So normally, yeah, as I have explained, so by the effect of thermal treatments, so sometimes you observe that there could be changes in the phenolic compounds. They become, so it could be the case that it's all also uh, reported in the literature. We do not increase the amount of antioxidants, but we increase the amount of extractable antioxidants. 
Sometimes they also make such an explanation in the literature. So it says that, so by when you disturb these structures, these complex structures, for example, as I have mentioned, they can be together with carbohydrates di attached to dietary fiber or proteins, and by heat application, you have a free form of phenolics, phenolic compounds. So that's why they become more available and extractable. This could be the reason why when you apply thermal treatments, it increases the amount that you observe. But uh, as I have mentioned, it's not always the case that it really increases because you should search for it in, with in vivo studies to really to observe the real effects. So normally, uh, of course, we have applied in vitro gastrointestinal digestion methods, which mimics the real situations, but it's always said, reported in the literature, that it's never, or you can never really mimic the same situation that happens in your body, in, the, in your uh, normal metabolism. So that's why it could be the case that, I mean, these are, you know, spectrophotometric results that we observe, uh, but it could be the case that maybe there's not a real increase, but just we obtain it in this way because we can extract them more. So this could be another explanation. Okay, last question. One more question. Yeah. Uh, you, you, you show us the uh, bioavailability yeah. uh, using the mimic uh, yeah, model. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you, you measure the bioavailability after passing, after the dialysis uh, test yeah, or before? True. No, uh, actually we have collected three fractions from that. The first one was after the stomach which is named as PG, post-gastric, and then we obtained the intestinal conditions and we took, put them in a dialysis bag. So the one which stays inside, we name it as in, which resembles the dialyzable fraction by the body, and the out fraction is going out. So somehow, of course, we do not follow, but we have in and out. So we also follow what happens to this infraction and out fraction as well. So we also made those experiments, but as the time is limited, I didn't mention or I didn't go into too much detail. But the important uh, uh, fraction is out. It's the in. The in? Yeah, yeah. It, as much uh, or as high in values as you have, it means that you have more bioavailable antioxidants. Fine. Yeah, it, it's, oh. it should be high, yeah. Okay, again, thanks very much for your presentation and I give you the certificate. Thank you very much.